Hello fantastic creatures, I'm Fanta Sims and welcome to my channel. Now in today's video I'm going to show you 5 easy ways to build on or under foundations in The Sims 4. Alright now, here I have a build I started a year ago, I was trying to recreate Bow Battens from Harry Potter and just ignore the shape of this because it's not great, but that is not the focus of the video today. Today we are looking at how you can build right up against or underneath foundations and the first method is to use debug objects that don't have a footprint and what I mean by footprint is this, you see the green grid at the bottom of an object, that's its footprint. Now most objects that green footprint will block a sim from walking through it, although there are lots of objects that have a footprint that your sims can still walk around or under but one of the problems with the sims 4 build mode is that there's not much option for foundations so if you go into the foundation swatches here even if you own all the packs we are very limited on the swatches that we can use and as you see here if you're building something that has an exceptionally high foundation height it can look pretty plain and boring if all you have is just one of these swatches like this and nothing up against it so to decorate it what you can do is is use objects that don't have big footprints like this is a debug base game stone post so when you place a debug object that doesn't have a huge footprint on it you can oftentimes blend it into the foundation wall like this and so there's these stone walls these stone pillars and there's all kinds of debug objects for each of the packs so for example rocks tend to not have a huge footprint and can usually be placed pretty close to a foundation although as you see if you place it too close it will jump up to the next level and that's the problem with trying to place things against foundations is most objects will jump right up to the wall level so you usually can't really put them close up against the foundation but you can with debug objects or objects that don't have a big footprint or there are actually objects like these where you can partially put some of it into the wall like half of it does go into the wall so you can find objects like this like even this stone gazebo can be put pretty close up against the foundation and you can come up with really cool designs okay so I'm just scrolling through the debug section I like to build on a generic lot you can access debug through residential as well but what I like about doing it on a generic lot is the sim first of all doesn't have to own the property you're working on which is helpful when you're using twisted mexi's tool mod because in order to use the mod you have to have a sim on the lot so for me it's just easier and also because all you have to do is go under generic items and automatically all the debug objects are there or you can download Better Build By by Twisted Mexi, which is also an incredible mod, where he has organized all the debug objects and made them available for you to access without typing in any cheats. And because they're organized, you can find them. So for example, if I click on rocks, it lists all the debug rocks. It is an incredible mod. That and his tool mod are the only mods I really use. But anyway, I digress. So if we access all these debug objects, I'm just gonna show you some of them will pop up to the level, but then some of them, like I said, see the footprint is very small. You can put it right up next to the foundation and that's really helpful to come up with some really cool custom designs. The only thing you have to keep in mind though is that sometimes these objects if you put too many of them around the foundation and let's say you put a stairway to access the first floor you have to be careful because some objects even if they have a small footprint they can block your sims ability to go up the stairs but playing around with debug objects is a good option because a lot of them can be put right up next to the foundation. Okay so since most objects do jump up to the next level when you try to place them near foundation then what do you do well that leads us to our second easy trick and that is the basement elevation technique okay so I will use this archway from get famous as an example if I want it to be on the foundation I cannot put it there because of the footprint so what I can do instead is build a basement wall so you can either if you've already got the foundation elevated you can build a basement wall like that it will lift up the terrain temporarily until you delete that wall and you can take the arch and place it at basement level and then when you go up you'll see that it has put it against the foundation now let's just say I don't want it to actually poke through the actual walls and there you go and then all you have to do is go back down to that level and delete the wall you just created and a quick tip is to hold the control key down as you draw a wall and it will delete the wall that is already there and then when you go up you won't have the terrain up against the foundation and you'll have the archway and you can play around with how high or how low you want it to be. You can also, because when you already have a foundation height elevated like this, if you build a basement level directly beneath it, let's say that I avoid one tile so that I don't get the terrain pulling up against the foundation. 
you'll only get it a little bit at the bottom. This basement level is actually still elevated above this ground level. It's actually rest right here. This is basement level one. If I were to build another basement level, this would be basement level two because the foundation is so high. But you can also build a basement underneath an elevated foundation from the ground level like so, and it will let you build it underneath. Although if you tried to put a staircase from here down to that basement level, the stairs would end up being really long because this foundation is so high. But you can also elevate things from this further down basement because you might want something to sit flush against the ground. So you can elevate it up to the very top of the wall and when you go up to the top level, it will be sitting right on the ground level. And the great thing about doing this is the footprint will not interfere with Sims. So if you have an object that would normally interfere with a Sims pathway, you can elevate it from the basement and they can still move through it, which is great if you want to place this up against the foundation and have a staircase that goes through. It shouldn't block or interfere with your Sims being able to walk up a stairway or through it. Now, obviously that was nowhere near the foundation. So let's say I pull it back. I pull it back to where the foundation actually is. Okay, now when I place it and I elevate it right, either right below ground level or right on the ground level, it'll be flush against the ground like that. But keep in mind, if you build an actual room and you put a bunch of objects, be careful when you try to move that room because it can move those objects around. But in this case, I can pull the room all the way up to there. And the reason why this is so helpful is because then I can remove the room and the object will still just stay there. Also, the benefit of not doing an actual room is that if you put an object within a room, it sometimes ends up with indoor lighting. So if you have an object with a bigger footprint and it goes inside the room, it'll end up being too dark for the outside. I'll show you one other foundation that works really well with this trick as well. Okay, now here is a magic tiny little caravan that I built. And this is an area where elevating from the basement is really helpful when you're using stilt foundations like this. All right, now normally if you have a stilt foundation like this, it functions just like a regular foundation, even though you can see underneath it, you can't actually place things underneath it. So this one does go under a little bit, but I couldn't place it right at the center because it has that footprint that's gonna jump it up to the next level. So to get this overgrown grassy area that I put underneath the caravan to make it feel a bit more realistic, I did the same trick from elevating it from the basement. As you can see here, actually most of the bottom part of the caravan is elevated from the bottom and it pokes through to the top. And all I had to do to make sure that I knew where exactly I wanted the plants to go was the same thing that I showed you a second ago where I built a a wall underneath each of the stilts and I just knew that the stilt was in the center of the two tile wide now it doesn't work as well on ones that are in between tiles but for those I just made a note that I had to move it over by half a tile and that helps if you're trying to do precise placement like let's say I want a plant to go right underneath the stilt I can elevate it up and stop either right above or right beneath and look at that, you've got a plant that's right underneath it. And that way you can come up with a really overgrown area and place all kinds of objects underneath, including furniture, plants, windows, all kinds of things. Okay, so you can place objects underneath by elevating them, but what if you want to use objects that kind of are flat, like the stuff that you put up against a wall? Because if you use that elevation from the basement technique and you build that basement wall and then you take an object that normally locks onto the wall and let's say you elevate it up from the basement level. Now when you go up some of it will poke through. Now this one is more three dimensional so the thickest part will stick out. But if you're using something that's flat such as like a picture or a poster and you elevate that from the basement then when you go up it's invisible because the thickness of the foundation sticks out further than the actual wall does. So what do you do then? Well, that leads us into our third simple trick, and that is to build a pool around the edge of the foundation. You can use the pool wall tool like this and build like that, or you can just simply use the square and pull it along like that. What it does is it cuts into the foundation and it makes it flush with where the wall is. So then if you want to place it, you can actually just place it directly on the foundation. If you're using something flat, it will hover out a little bit. So it's not a perfect solution, but it does work well for, let's say you want to build this mega castle tower with a foundation height like this, where it's crazy, or you're building like an urban city where you want some of the buildings to look like skyscrapers. And so you elevate it up. Well, it doesn't look very realistic when there's just this big hunk of chunk of foundation sticking there. But if you put a little pool around the edge, you can actually put windows up against it and give the illusion that there's 
some extra floors and you can use things like I mean this is a light from the new Journey to Batu pack but you can use the sculptural pieces to add trims so it looks like there's lots of different floor levels beneath the build so any of these objects will be able to click on there and again they will hover slightly but that's not a huge issue if you cover the whole area around the sides no one's going to see from the side or if you do something like the archway and that can act as a sort of frame around those flat pieces that are sticking out slightly now the downside of using this method is sometimes you can get away with deleting the pool when you're done and i've been able to do this before and it hasn't deleted all the pieces up against the wall but sometimes it does actually most of the time it does and if you try to get rid of it by sliding it to the side it will move these objects that have been elevated from the pool level and deleting that pool will make the foundation stick out again so it will cover those flat pieces so what I would recommend is if you're going to use the pool and let's say your build isn't supposed to have a moat around it you don't want it to look like it's a castle with a moat you can just hide the pool with like plants or rocks or something and kind of pretend it's not even there and that way you're able to put all kinds of things up against a foundation which is really cool okay now for the fourth and fifth simple method to place objects on or under foundations we're actually going to be using the tool mod so the first three methods should work perfectly for you for both pc and console players but there are a couple other ways you can do it too and i will show you and the fourth one is to rotate objects sideways so that the footprint doesn't interfere with the foundation and i'm just using this shell that is already up in the gallery but i'm just going to show you against the foundation what you can do if you rotate an object sideways so let's say i'm just going to take these rocks and let's say i want to be able to put some rocks in a unique way on the side of the foundation. I can go over into live mode. If you've got the tool mod installed, I'm going to shift click and I'm actually going to elevate this by 0.5, let's just say, and then I'm going to rotate it. That's the wrong axis. So I'm going to change the axis until it faces the way I want. Yep, that's the way I want it. And I want it to rotate to the left by 90 degrees, which is a quarter turn, quarter of a circle. I'm going to put 90. Now, sometimes you have to use minus 90 if you want to rotate it the other way. Then I'm going to go back into build mode. And the reason I elevate it, probably don't need to for this one, but the reason I usually elevate objects before I rotate them is sometimes they can get stuck or lost into the floor and I don't want that. And then I can usually place quite close to the foundation, not all the way, but rotating it sideways is helpful, first of all, when you want an object to be sideways rather than upwards, but also because when you rotate something sideways, the footprint doesn't interfere with the sim anymore. So let's say I wanted this area area down here to be accessible to my sim but I don't want the objects around the foundation to block their path or block them from doing an activity that I've got right here. Rotating something sideways means that the footprint will not interfere with your sim which is very helpful. And then the fifth and final easy peasy lemon squeezy way to build against the foundation is to lower an object from foundation level. Okay, so if I'm at foundation level and let's say I want to have this architectural detail down in the foundation, I can place it right here and then in live mode, shift click, tool, elevate, and then lower it. So I'm gonna try lowering it by two. Actually, that worked out quite perfectly. <laughs> so I can also make it bigger if I want. So I could shift click, tool, scale now it's automatically one when it's the regular size but i sized it up in build mode so technically now it's two so i'm going to try scaling it by 2.2 see how big that makes it okay not quite big enough let's do three that might be a bit too big but it doesn't matter because i'm just showing you how you can lower objects and i'm going to lower it a bit more by let's try minus 1.5 and that's a bit too low so I'm gonna elevate it by 0.5 yeah and that's pretty perfect unless I wanted it to sit a bit above but this way it's not gonna flicker on the top of the surface because it's right underneath that rim and this is a great way to really place objects where you can see them because you can place things from basement level like I showed you before but when you're working with these curved foundations sometimes it's a bit more helpful to shape the objects on the foundation level and then lower them and depending on how much lower you make it it shouldn't interfere with your sims path I mean you will have to play test it because if you're only lowering it by a little bit it might still interfere for certain objects but for the most part the footprint doesn't register as being in the way for your sim and there you have have it five easy peasy ways for you to build against or under a foundation to make your builds look way more interesting 
I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for stopping by. Be sure to like, subscribe, and all that great stuff. As always, thank you for your wonderful support. Love ya!